We here, we here. Let me get some things started. What's up, everybody? Um, let me get the description right. Yo, yo, what's up, man? We here, we here. I know it's a little early, man. What's up, everybody? I know we a little early. I know usually we do that like 9 o'clock at night, but we 1 p.m. today. I had to make sure I squeeze my guy, Curtis King, in the building. I right, see we got Soul Greatness in the building. Beat, beat Renegade. What's up, my guys? Let me write the little description right here real quick. Let me see. Where y'all from, man? Go ahead and put in the comments where everybody's from. As I wait, we wait for Curtis King to get in, man. It's going to be a great conversation. Yeah, I'm trying to load the details in real quick. Uh... How y'all feeling, man? It's Monday morning. How y'all Monday's starting off so far? And why we got NY in the building. Nick, what's up, babe? I know, I know where you at. <laughs> and again, we about to get started, man. Any um any questions y'all have for us, make sure y'all put it in the bottle, the bubble. I don't know if it's over here or over there. Go ahead and get my guy Curtis King in here. We're on a little tight schedule, but I want to make sure we give as much value to everybody as possible. Let me go ahead and get my guy in here. How do I send the request? Hey, Curtis, if you can, bro, request to uh, join the live. I'm not seeing how I add you. I'm tired. Oh, yeah, man. Monday blues, man. You got to gotta wake up with some energy. I was tired, too, man. You know, we got the newborn. He be having us up throughout the night for the most part. But it's all good. We here. We here. How do I request? Oh, right, there we go. All right, we're going to get my guy Curtis in here. Let's get him. Everybody, if you can hear me, give me a thumbs up. I just want to make sure everybody can hear pretty good and everything smooth. Hold on. Accept it. My guy. What's going on with you, bro? How you doing? Man, I'm blessed, bro. How you feeling today? Doing well. Doing well. It's getting after it. Oh, good, good. Hey, what time is it over there, man? I know last time we were speaking, the time's only throwing me off. Uh, it's 10 a.m. Okay. And uh, where are you located at the moment? You in San Bernardino still? San, Di San Diego. San Diego? Okay, okay. How long have you been living there? A uh, few years. A few years now. Okay, okay, cool. So, shout out to everybody who's joining in again. You know, I got my guy Curtis King on here. Uh, for those who don't know, I normally just hop on here and we speak about branding, uh, production. We're going to talk a little bit about that. But what I really wanted to get my guy Curtis on here is to speak on, you know, the father and uh, the husband aspect of things is being a producer in this crazy industry. So, um, just go ahead and if you have any questions for me or Curtis, make sure you hit the bubble down there. And we'll get y'all um, questions answered. My guy, well, real, um, real, real quick, bro. Can, yeah, hey, sure. can, can, can we get an edit on the uh, on the name up there? You got me with one edit. <laughs> say it one time. Say it again. My fault. I blanked out. I said. You, I said. Can we get an edit on the name up there? Just to, just to avoid any confusion. We need one more S on that on that Curtis. I thought I, oh man, I thought I had it on there. I'm, I don't know if I can edit it right now, but I know when I post the video, I got you. I'll straighten it for sure. For sure. For sure. So shout out to everybody who joined in. I see we got Nikki, we got King Kobo, we got 41 Clutches. So, man, hey, Curtis, I wanted to start off by saying, literally before I got on here, man, I, I was out hopping on YouTube, just um, going through some things, and I came across the Find Your Way video. The mm -hmm. concept, that the thumbnail caught me, first of all, but the concept was crazy, bro. I really love that video. I appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. It just went live today. Um, mm -hmm. Something that kind of came to me when I was with my son and watching, uh, rewatching Blue's Clues with him. Uh -huh. He's four years old. And so watching it with him get, gave me a different perspective on the show. And, mm. uh, uh, you know, this is one of the things where an idea comes to you and you ask yourself, what do you have tools wise to make it happen? Mm. But um, it's, it's, it's a lot of, a lot of different, layers to a lot of different meanings to it but all in all it's uh probably the polar opposite visual colorful wise of what the song is the yes. song is really really uh shouldn't say dark but it's like very introspective and so you probably would expect something with some dark coloring and i was like you know what nah i want to go to complete opposite but i also want it to be something to where it can speak to my son in a special way because mm. uh, he's a special kid so 100 yeah. percent. uh man so did, so you were the producer behind it as well, correct? Of course. I did everything on that. So oh, man. produced it, recorded it, uh, wrote it, directed the video, edited the video. Really? <laughs> lighted the lighted the green screen down in the living room. Like everything is DIY. That was, all, that, that was all you completely? 
everything top to bottom. Only thing I didn't do was master the song. Uh, shout out to the homie, yo gosh, who ended up coming over here to master yeah. it. Uh, but everything up top to bottom um, is something I've been doing for almost 20 plus years now. So wow. that's another example of that. Well, bro, I'm impressed, bro. I thought you, you hired somebody to do that. That, that was a crazy appreciate video. It. That means I'm doing my job right. 100%. So, hey, man, shout out to Old Gosh, man. That's my guy, man. Old Gosh is the one who helped me set up my sound treatment in the studio. Nice. That's my guy right there. Yeah, yeah man. I mean, he's, he's responsible for those up there. So. <laughs> oh, yep. I already know. That's my guy. So he's he's about about what? I know because he's – I know when I, when I was down there, he was just moving to the L.A. area. How far is he from you now? I mean, LA to, LA to San Diego, so about two hours. Two hours? Oh, I thought it was further than that. Okay. So, man, since we're speaking on the music, man, let's, let's, talk, let's talk about the album. I want to jump up straight to that. Let's talk about the album. Let's talk about um, the concepts behind the album. Give me a, give us, to those who haven't listened, give us a um, brief breakdown of it. So, the, the DIY 2 album is my latest project. It's the second in a series. Uh, it's kind of a weird series, and that the first one was an EP that I released and the whole concept behind it is obviously DIY stands for do it yourself. Mm -hmm. And the last time I did the project like this, it was me getting an opportunity to launch on all the ideas that you share with other producers, share with other artists. And they'll tell you like, yeah, I don't really know if that's going, that's going to hit. Right. And it was my opportunity to sit with it and say, well, I'll just do it myself and we'll see what the people say. And so the first DIY presented a lot of the biggest songs of my career uh, early on. And so this one was no different except for the fact that now I have my own studio. I have my own capabilities to do everything from the production to the recording all in the house. But then also, too, every single song that I recorded, a camera was rolling. Mm. Um, so it was interesting because it gave me about five hours and 30 minutes on every single song to create it because of the SD card limitation. And uh, I took the challenge on, recorded even some songs on my live stream, mm -hmm. but uh, the project ended up being, I think, the, the best work that I've ever created because mm -hmm. um, I went through about 50 plus songs to get there. Mm -hmm. And ultimately where we landed is um, somewhere I'm extremely proud of. Uh, Jay Kasai, another artist from out here, uh, actually executive produced it. So okay. as much as it was me doing a lot of the things on my own, uh, it was very much uh, a group synergy that really brought it home. So, uh, but yeah, it, it's, it's, it, that project is out right now. There's an album, there's an instrumental version of it. Okay. There's an acapella version of it, and there's a clean edit version for those, for those of my uh, listeners that got kids. <laughs> Right, right, one hundred percent. So, did you um? So, let me ask you this. Um, I know you personally from from the production side. Um, yep. did you start off as a producer, or were you an artist first? And because you know, most um, producers who started, you know, who makes music also, you know, didn't have the have a producer to make their beats. So, how was your process in the be beginning, going from artist to producer, or producer to artist? I wasn't supposed to be a producer. I wasn't supposed <laughs> to be a producer from the beginning. I was an artist that was just like any other artist looking for specific type of production but mm -hmm. also production that fit in my budget and that budget was pretty much zero at that point in time <laughs> right. um and at that time producers were charging differently for exclusive prices exclusive beats yeah. and um because i didn't have the funds and i was in high school a buddy of mine uh he and i went to the mall one time there's a, there's a spot called electronic boutique it's not even around anymore but they basically sold video games we went in there to go get nba 2k Two maybe like it's the Iverson wow. on the cover. Iverson on the cover, yep. Mm -hmm, we went yep. to go get that one, and we both had money to split to buy it. And I just so happened to uh to go through the used PlayStation section, and I found this game called MTV Music Generator. Yep. What's up, there, yo? Uh, music uh, Generator, and that project or not project that pro that uh C it was a double disc PlayStation game, and mm -hmm. I showed it to the homie, and I was like, look. We're, we're working on music right now, and I know we want to get this 2K, but this might be something. And yeah. So, like, well, let's try it out. Took it home. First, he took it home. He didn't really like. He didn't like it, <laughs> and so then I Crazy took it process. home, and that literally launched off the next 20 years of my 
shoot, not not 20 years yet. Next year be 20 years since yeah. I started on MTV Generator. Yeah. And then I started making beats eventually on FL Studio. But literally that decision launched everything. That getting that PlayStation game yeah. is what launched this whole thing. See, I probably I probably definitely would have still got the 2K and not gotten that game. Oh, we still got it, just not. Then. Oh, okay. <laughs> Man, so it's not thin. The game, the game was cheaper, but it it, it, cut, it split our money in half, and because mm. of that, we weren't in a position to get both of them. But uh, mm. later on, when he decided he was going, because we were a group, when he decided yeah. he wasn't going to be the rapper, the, who wasn't going to be the producer of the group, and I was, uh -huh. he was like, well, "I'll just get two K next time I get some money." And that's right, what right. I nah, man, I don't, ain't no wrong with that. So let me ask you. Um, I know a few seconds ago we just spoke on, you know, the industry not. You know, like you say, as far as your your project, the DIY tool that you have, you pretty much went a route to where you did it on your own. Everything was DIY, and you know, you made that based up because you thought the industry wouldn't accept it. And you decided to do things on your own. You know, from from the you know buying the game to now, you know, tell me about some challenges you had as being an artist and a producer trying to, I guess, you know, as we all were at one point trying to fit in the box in, in this industry. Which challenges would you um did you come across trying to be who you are? Right. Well. What I was talking about earlier wasn't even necessarily the industry. I'm talking about mm. just like your, your homie that you're working on music with first. Mm. First of all, okay. the, the people that are in your circle, um, although they believe in you and, it, and it's not with malicious intent, mm. they it's not their responsibility to see the vision that you've been gifted with, right? Right, for sure. And that's a hard lesson to learn for a younger artist or producer because we want everybody to, you know, not only see the vision, but kind of assist us and help us along the way so that it'll it'll be a little easier to to, to come together, right. and that wasn't the case. Mm -hmm. When you get to the industry, you recognize that because it's a business and generally somebody else's business, you don't really have too much power walking in somebody else's establishment and telling them how they should do things. Right. So uh, acceptance wasn't really the, the the goal there. It was really just trying to understand the lay of the land and kind of figure out how to blend in, I guess. But mm -hmm. what I found was that over time, it will be revealed to me that I don't fit in with that traditional industry right. um, on many different levels, even from the style of producer that I was at the time. I was a sample-based producer. Well, there right. wasn't much direction for that because it was majority trap and more so like function music mm -hmm. um, out here in Cali, at least. So that didn't fit in. As an artist, because of the things I want to talk about and because I'm not making music that's you know, going to be spun on urban radio or like club radio or like mainstream. Or it was a lot of things that I was just figuring out, like, OK, these are two things that are major, but I can right. work my way through it because I'm somebody who likes to, you know, stay after it. The sure. biggest thing for me was the money. If we're going to mm. keep it on stack. Yeah. My thing is. You have to run through so many loops when playing that industry game. Until you have the cloud, until you have the leverage, until you have that position, you have to run through so many different people to get to one check. One person has to talk to one person, has to talk to one person, has to talk to one person. Now, mm -hmm. much of that has probably changed. I don't know. I haven't been yeah. a part of that industry in some years. But when I saw that, I saw that that was going to slow down my way of um, generating income, doing what I love. Yeah. And at the same time came the emergence of social media and the Internet as we know it. Right. And I saw an opportunity and that opportunity uh, eventually meshed into me selling beats online. Mm. And that launched everything. Yeah. Because, see, uh, right when I was starting to, I want to say 2012, you know, of course, you busy work beats, my guy busy. You two were the main ones who I studied as far as wanting to sell beats online. But as you know, I'm in Atlanta, so you know you know how the music scene is out here, and I just didn't fit in. You know, I tried to fit in, but you know I'm more of R&B pop based producer, mm -hmm. so I didn't really fit in. So I 100% get you on that. So I, I guess I wanted to ask you, you know, what was the mind state going into you know the music and you know having that, you know I know I don't fit fit in here, but I'm gonna make this work for myself. What was the what was the mind state and the drive behind that? Behind what specifically? As far as, you know, doing things your way, going your own route rather than the traditional route as far as your music. Yeah, I, well, I think you said it. I think that when you have an idea that is burning within you, mm -hmm. that is on your head, that is on your mind, that is something that you cannot, 
you can't you can't even sleep comfortably without getting that idea out there right there's not really a choice it's mm -hmm. not a matter of me getting up and needing motivation or needing somebody to show me the way even right. though there's been a million a, a million people along this journey that i've met that have have taught me some kind of lesson right mm -hmm. but I, there was no other choice i was i was the kid early on when i was making music that if i couldn't afford the cd that had all the sound effects on it uh -huh. that you would put like in like now is a splice basically they used to come on yeah, DVDs yeah. and cds i was the kid that said all right i can't afford to buy these sounds of somebody walking and stomping on cement for a skit that i'm working on right. but i got a microphone Mm -hmm. So let me turn this microphone on, find anything in a room, like a shoebox, and then literally use my, my, my fingers to imitate steps. Yeah. And it was literally the early stages of me learning sound design, but that was the kind of kind of like mindset and ingenuity where I didn't think it was ingenious. I didn't think it was anything special. I just knew that I got to get this shit done. 100%. Nobody's coming to save me. Nobody's coming to help until you get things moving, Chris Rock says something one time in a stand-up comedy where he was like, nobody helps the person that is stranded on the side of the road, but they help the person that's pushing their car. People that that's jump true. off their car to go help that person. But wow. if you're sitting there stranded on your phone waiting for AAA, you're waiting for yeah. AAA. Nobody's going to help you. But if you start getting out your car and, and, and busting your ass and pushing on that vehicle, You'd be yeah. surprised how many people show up when you start building momentum. Yeah. And so that has been something that's been uh, the norm for my entire career is that a lot of times I got to get my ass out the car and push. And mm. when I do that, people pop up out of nowhere. And I know it's not out of nowhere. I'm a God fear, man. I know that God aligns people in my life that for sure. uh, are supposed to be there. But for anybody else, it looks like magic because mm. the moment that Wait. Yeah, go do that. Shout out to everybody who's in here, man. I hope y'all getting some great. All right, can um, you hear me? Here. Yep, yeah, we here, bro. Are you good? Can you hear me? Okay, okay. I had to do do a do not disturb. Getting calls, y'all hear you. So, uh, okay. so that's that's that that was the mindset is that nobody else is gonna put these ideas together, and the worst case scenario for me is to look back 20, 30 years from now. And recognizing that, damn, I could have done it myself and I didn't because I was scared yeah. or I didn't because yeah. I allowed my mindset to be the limited resource and not the actual resources. I like I wasn't resourceful is what I'm basically saying. Yeah. So love that, bro. I love that. And that makes a lot of sense. Um, so what I what I want to do now, I want to jump into the main reason why I wanted to have this conversation with you. Um, everyone knows you as a producer, the um the writer, and not to mention the author, of course. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I'm really just getting into and not too much detail, you know, the kind of uh, kind of person you are as a family man, you know, mm -hmm. um, un you know, like yourself, which is very rare. You know, I'm married, you know, been married almost nine years in November. Um, me and my wife have four kids, just had our fourth son, what, on the seventh, what, two weeks ago. So he's only two yeah. weeks old, my son. Appreciate <laughs> it, man. And um, I wanted to have a conversation with you because it's very hard for me to to be a man of God for one, two you know, be a family, a family man and being a music producer as well in this industry or outside the industry, however you want to pay, play it, just doing music as a whole. Um, how do you, well, I guess we can start off, you know, how do you balance, if there is a balance, you right. know, I haven't figured that out yet, um, you know, being, ha being all those layers, a father, producer, author, you know, what, if, to those who are listening, who those are, who are fathers or in case may be, what are some tools you would tell them to help manage their time as far as all those layers stop looking for balance balance doesn't exactly. exist balance <laughs> doesn't exist um right. what you're what you're really looking for and i know that it may be an argument of semantics but what you're really looking for is harmony because yes. the moment i became a father is the moment i realized that time is not equal like energy exertion in an hour is not equal no. the energy that it requires to make a beat and the energy that it requires to stay up with a one month, two month year old who is crying around. I mean, you're you're right in the midst of it now. Right. Uh those are two different types of energy. So to say 
Well, mm -hmm. if I give my music two hours today and then I give my family two hours, yeah, they're not the same quality of time. Mm -hmm. And so what I've come to understand is two things. One, what you're really ser searching for, anybody who's out there who's listening, is harmony. You yeah. want to figure out if there's a way to find harmony between the process of creating your music and also your responsibilities as the man of the house, as the father. Um, there are things that you must deliver on. And if you don't deliver on those, ultimately, they're going to affect your ability to create the music. Right. And then vice versa. If you don't have those creative outlets, mm -hmm. you can't pour that energy back into your family because yeah. you got to have a place to, you know, dump and express uh, those things that are on your mind. So mm -hmm. harmony. And I think harmony is achieved when you don't look at it from the lens of only what you need as a producer and mm -hmm. as a dad, but what your family needs. If my wife is feeling good and she's at peace, right, and my son right. is feeling like he's good, mm -hmm. the energetic flow travels throughout the whole house. But in right. terms of harmony, the harmony that I created was that I didn't want a career. Forget rapper, producer. I didn't want a career mm. that made made it to where I couldn't be around my family. Yeah, exactly. Or have the option to, I could jump off this interview right now, go down the hallway, wake my son up, and exactly. then come back in here and, and literally launch on an album campaign or edit right. a music video. Like, I'm in the same house that does all that. Go downstairs, and I can do a green screen music video that goes out to the world. Like, yeah. Or I could do a live stream that broadcasts, you know. So it's like so many different things that I didn't know that's what I wanted. Mm hmm but that's what it became. And now yeah. the harmony that is created is the fact that I have days where I don't work. My wife has a home business as well. So down the hallway is her, her nail business. And she yeah. has a room that's dedicated to nothing but her art and her business. And so mm -hmm. I think that creates a harmony. Is it always perfect? No. no. Does it always work? No. But right. that reminds you that it's something that if you love the people that you are doing this for, you will constantly work on it and you will constantly make the edits that are necessary. Right. Man, har I never really heard harmony put into that aspect like that. So that's that an amazing word. Because even for myself, you know, I always thought there was a balance, you know. So I was like, okay, maybe if I, like you said, I do five hours in the studio, five hours with the missus, and then five hours with the kids or us together. It just never worked out because there wasn't any perfect harmony. And uh, to anyone who's listening, that's my wife right there. What's up, baby? Nini, that's my wife. Okay. Um, to, to anybody, you know based on what you said and best what I said, just try to find that harmony. Don't really look for a balance because there's, I can tell you nine years of being married, bro, kids, four kids like that, there is no such thing as balance. Mm -hmm. So um, that was a great way to put that. Um, since we're speaking on, um, you know, kids, um, I know I spoke to you about, you know, my situation. Um, to those who are new, who don't know, um, my our firstborn, my wife and I are firstborn, she was diagnosed with cancer at the age of seven months and she passed away at the age of five. Um, mm -hmm. That alone, you know, was a huge, a huge shift in my mental, emotional, financial, every state. And in between that, I was still trying to find a balance with my music, right? I know recently you, um, you expressed to the world a, a certain, certain situation that you and your family are going through. Um, I don't, I don't want to get into any details or anything. I wanted to ask you as a man first, and then we'll get on the husband later. Mentally, how did you, you know, like you, you have a whole album out, you know, after getting that kind of news, how did you manage to, to push forward, forward with those things and still stay productive and to still, you know, do the thing that you're doing at the moment? Right. Well, the, the diagnosis you're referring to, uh, and we talked before a uh, hand or whatnot. Yeah. I don't want to go into too many details, only out of respect for my wife's wishes okay. and for my son as well. Mm -hmm. But um, he got a diagnosis of being, uh, 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 he, he, has, he has autism and he's, I think, too moderate on the scale. Mm -hmm. And um, it's something that presented its own mental challenges. You want to talk about, you know, man to man, its own mental challenges in, mm -hmm. in which the first question as a parent is what's going on with my child and you know, why are we not seeing development in certain areas? And obviously with the pandemic, it just delayed everything. It made us feel like, well, maybe it's the pandemic, maybe it's this and that. Uh, but I'll tell you this, I've, I've gone through a will, a, a will of emotions. 
right? Yeah. I've gone through all kind of emotions that you can think of in the first year from the realization that it might be a possibility to the denial to eventually getting to a healthy place where it was like not even just acceptance, but how can this be to his benefit? How right. can this be to our benefit? And I'll tell you now, uh, there's a level of calm and a level of drive that I've never experienced before. I've been driven my entire career, my entire life. There's a level of drive now that I can't even really put it into words for you. Yeah. Um, people will see me do things and be like, oh, you work hard and da 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 da. And I don't really take that too much into account. This is what I need to do, not right. what, I, what I have to do. It is what I get to do, and I'm grateful for that, but it's what I need to do. Mm. And um, it, it excites me every day to create an environment for him in which I can be there around the clock, in which we can seek out early, early um, uh, intervention and mm. get him all the, all the assistance that he could ever ask for or need. Um, and that's something else, too, is that I, that's the only reason why also, too, I, I felt the need to bring it up. I know I t talked to you earlier and I was like, I didn't really want to go into good, good, great detail. But when it comes to our folks, yeah, we we the the I had a friend of mine uh, that I went to high school with. She gave me the stats and she was like, our folks are the ones that don't seek out early intervention or, yeah. or, or early help. And mm -hmm. uh, it was dis it was discouraging to her and it's discouraging to me. And, and it, and it yeah. kind of led me to feel like there's a certain responsibility for me to speak on it and uh, to encourage those that, yeah. you know, it's nothing to be embarrassed about. It's 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 a it's literally your 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 child has been given a superpower. Yes, Shout sir. out to the Dorian Group 82. He's he, this is his wording. He's been given a superpower in that he sees the world in a different way. Yeah. And it's in a way that he doesn't waste energy concerning himself with being too overly sensitive around people like we are in our early years right his brain is wired a completely different way and he sees the world a different way yeah different doesn't mean bad different doesn't mean black sheep different doesn't mean there's none of that my child has something that is a gift yeah. that's going to give him the power of hyper focus i just have to as a parent regardless <laughs> I have to, as a parent, make sure that I can help him point that in the right direction. And then also, too, not try to change yes. his world, but understand his world so I can help him in his world. Yeah. Man, thank you for sharing that with us, bro. And um, just like you said, you know, it's a gift. You know, my wife and I took, I mean, it was very hard, you know, for us to take that sure. as a blessing, you know what I'm saying? But, um, you know, we just use our story. You know, of course, those who have followed me, we've documented the whole process from the year it started, the month it started until, you know, up until our passing up until now. Mm -hmm. um, and what I really admire what you're doing with your situation is that you're taking that and you're using that as a seed to, to be able to bless others. You know, that's kind of something similar that we're doing. Because of that, you know, we've, we've created, my wife and I, of course, have created a nonprofit where we help childhood cancer parents and kids who are going through those type of things. So we understand how it is to be in the hospital, not have to pay bills, blah, 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 not to go too deep into it. So, yeah. you know, as a man to man, as father to father, husband to husband, I definitely appreciate you sharing that story because it was always production that I've seen from you. But when you started opening up and, you know, from the, the new content you put out now is very um, inspirational. Shout out to Nikki, my dog, Nikki Saunders. She's the one who um, shares some stories with me. I'm like, that's my guy, um, Curry. I followed him, followed him for years. So shout out to Nikki. So, um, so man, I know you have the, um, the beat battle coming up. So let's go ahead and knock out. A, I think we have two more questions. Before we go there, man, tell us about the beat battle. So today, uh, we're doing a beat battle uh, with the good folks over at Sky Tech Gaming and Intel Gaming. And um, they're basically blessing a producer with a PC, gaming PC, that's, I think, worth about fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars $1,600. Uh, it comes fully equipped, comes with uh, Call of Duty Modern, Modern Warfare 2. Uh, it's just, it's a bunch of different things that come with it. So today is the draft in which we're going to go through, oh gosh, Leotis, yeah. homie Nabi and I are going to comb through probably 150 plus beats today. Okay. Um, in a live stream that's on my YouTube channel, Curtis King TV. We're going to comb through all of those beats and we're going to be harsh because we got to get down to 16 mm -hmm. or eight people. We got to decide that part of it though. Uh, but literally, we're getting it down, combing it down, and then tomorrow is the actual battle itself, 
in which mm. those producers will compete against one another. But um, either way, should be fun. Should be something that, uh, you know, producers get an opportunity to be heard because there's going to be a lot of people in there. Yeah. Uh, those beat battles tend to do that. But today's just a draft day, and then okay. tomorrow's the actual battle. And uh, we'll see who wins the game in PC. So you, ha you all have Is a decision? Late? No, no, no. You can yeah, it's not too late. You can still join before 5 p.m. Pacific time. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you go right now to my uh, my link tree in my bio, it'll literally lead you right to that sign up form. And then there's going to be a private discord that you're able to um, submit your stuff to. Okay. All right, man. Well, hey, let's let's go ahead. Hey, if you haven't, make sure you follow Curtis King on YouTube. Make sure you tune into that beat bout. If you, you there is time to go ahead and start to join in, so please do. Um, I'm gonna ask you a few more questions so we can go ahead and get you up out of here, Brody. Um, hey, would be said, how do you get beats to ours in 2022? I, I think that, and and mind you, sometimes I speak in ways where I, I, I recognize that I might be in a different space or a different yeah. headspace. But I'm mm -hmm. always trying to think about what's coming up next independently for us as music producers. Right. Um, something I'm probably going to end up going live after this is I think that for the longest independence for a music producer or an artist has been always like tech nine. Like that's right. it, like it's been like that. But we don't recognize is that even within the, the environment of main within the environment of underground there's a mainstream of underground. Right. Uh, or not even underground, excuse me, that's the wrong term. Independent. Because mm -hmm. yeah. underground is a, is a, there is a mainstream of independence and then there's small businesses within independence. Mm -hmm. And so for producers looking to submit music to artists, I always suggest to them the better play is to find an artist right where mm -hmm. you're at, mm -hmm. work with them, build with them, because you're going to learn lessons that's going to actually help you if you still want to go the route of submitting your beats off to artists. Right. What you're going to learn working with an artist is how to carve out room in your production so that the vocals sit really nicely over your beats. Mm -hmm. What you're going to learn is the likes and dislikes of artists. What you're going to learn is arrangement tips that they're going to give you because of their their instincts. And they share a lot of the same instincts, these rappers that you're trying to reach out to, who just the only thing that separates them is the fact that they have the popularity, they have the numbers. Mm -hmm. um, submitting to artists, I, I think the best the best thing that you could ever do long term for your career is to create a resume of original music with artists that have worked with you because inevitably it's going to always come back to you. Yes. Yo, who produced you? Like who really produced you? And if you're the producer that did that, you're going to have so much more longevity than yeah. just being a placement on somebody's project. Who gives a shit? And like exactly. really after the project is after two weeks. That's it. Who gives a shit? Mm hmm. And this is somebody who's worked, like I said, I work with Kendrick Lamar, Absol, uh, you know, Glass Malone, all these different folks. Nobody gives a shit after two weeks. They, they look at your credits, they might follow you, but they don't go <laughs> tapping into what you do unless you give them an opportunity to do that. Right. So in terms of submitting the artists in 2022, it's 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 almost laughable now. Yeah. Um, only because of how much flexibility and freedom that you have to create it right there on your own. Yeah. So um my suggestion is just find somebody that is within reach somebody mm -hmm. that you ain't got to worry about getting on the phone yeah 100 percent. because it's too it's too big time or it's mm -hmm. too you know too hollywood or whatever don't right. worry about that no more yeah find somebody that you work with that you can sit up there text message ideas somebody that at two in the morning you could shoot a text and be like yo i got this idea for us that we can work on this week right. that's the kind of relationships you want to build on and uh, then build your way up. Yeah, but don't use people as pedestals to do that. Yeah, that's that was that's always my thing, man. I'm, I'm always looking to build. Always looking to build with artists. I, I like you know, like we spoke on earlier, the freedom, man. Just the hustle and bustle to get the big placement. That just wasn't my thing, man. I want to just make beats. I want to have the art. I want to build a relationship with artists. I can pull up to the crib. I want to be able to go to spend time with the family, the wife. Like it would just. So it, I guess it boils down to what kind of producer do you really want to be based on your own situation, what? too? I, I would even argue this. Even beyond what kind of producer you want to be, there's a book called mm -hmm. The 4-Hour Workweek that um, I think all of us should, who, who are who are, have small business or any business at all, you should definitely look at it. 4-Hour Workweek yeah. um, by Tim Ferriss. And, and one thing that I got from there that was the absolute gem, before you pick the career you want, determine the type of lifestyle you want. Yes. Yep. And... 
the type of lifestyle that I, I, I like, I, it dawned on me. I, I was going to tweet it last night, but I was like, yeah, it sounds like a flex. I'm going to leave it alone. Right. But I was like, 10 years ago, I literally created a new job for myself hmm. online. 10 years ago, I created a new job that didn't even exist. I look crazy in the industry talking hmm. things about, like, oh, I'm on a live stream on YouTube. Like, what, yeah. are you, what are you talking about, bro? Like, if you don't right. get studios and... But that was 10 years. I had a 10-year head start on it. And now, yeah, because of that, you kind of get grandfathered in a lot of things. But I know the lay of the land. And I understand that your ultimate value, especially in the industry, is, is your, uh, your track record. And when people know how valuable you are to a room, when people know that you have a resume, shout out to the homie Nabi, and who's actively in that pursuit. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and he's doing that. He's worked with the Kanye's and, and, um, and, and, and Nas and all these different folks. He's doing it in a way that shows me how the, pro the producer position has evolved. Because mm -hmm. when I was in it, there wasn't as much flexibility as he has right now. Mm -hmm. um, but even we talk about some things that pop up. And I'm just like, it points more and more to you got, you're going to have to figure this shit out where you're at. Yeah. You're going to have to figure it out where you're at. I know a lot of producers don't want to hear that, but you're going to have to figure it out where you're at. Get it, get it boiling, get it buzzing right where you're at. When you do that, nobody can take it away. It's almost right. like how moms and pops used to say, like, when you get a degree, nobody can take that away. It's the same thing with this, is mm -hmm. that when you build that rapport and you build up that you have done this yeah. as your own producer, mm -hmm. you're good. Then yeah. that way you don't get any industry producers that are telling you that you're not a music producer. That's right. not a thing too, right? Exactly. Because, uh, are you just a, a beat maker? Beat maker. Worry yeah. about that as well because you have done the work that I, uh, that I uh, deserves a title. Mm. Man, I love it. And you said that was the four hour work week. That was the book. Four hour work week by Tim Ferriss. Okay, cool. Yeah, I started reading the 12 year, what is it? 12 week year. I got to make sure I grab that one next too. All right, yeah. one more question, man. We'll get you out of here. Sure. All right, let me see. Oh, there you go. All right. Big MD. Uh, I'm sorry if I said that wrong. He said, what's the best way to do business on Instagram without running into scammers? Um, you can answer that and I'll follow up. <laughs> uh, it's, it, he said, what's the best way to go about business? In uh, oh, you can't see the question on, on the screen on your side? No, 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 I can't see it on my side, unfortunately. Okay, I'm sorry about that. They say, what's the best way to do business on Instagram without running into scammers? Yeah, you might have to answer that one, only because um, the mm -hmm. ones that I... The, <laughs> the scammers are usually the ones that reach out to me. Right, right, right. I'm, I'm, I'm not reaching out to anybody that's, that's, uh, that's got any kind of scam energy on them, but right. uh, I, I'll tell you, that there's a few things that that you should look out for when anybody's trying to conduct business with you. The first one is if anybody ever asks you for money up front before they've shown you what they can do, if they don't have a resume of showing you what you can do, if you can't verify it, well, at least uh, if you're going to be spending anything above a hundred dollars, mm. if you can't verify their work with at least two or three other people that you have right. within reach, that's already, a, that's already an issue. Second yeah. issue. If somebody is rushing you to business, don't do that business. Right. There's no rush. If 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 your value is what they say your value is, there's no rush. Everything and what I found right. is that when you take your time, people start to reveal their true intent. Right? Well, Anybody yeah, who's pushing, 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 I need you to no. I I mm -hmm. I would rather say no and miss out on money right. than say yes and deal with something that I have to do because they paid me money. Right. That's one aspect of it. And then um, I think the last thing with that is uh, do your Googles, like do your do your fact checks on them. It's not mm -hmm. that hard to find if somebody has a, a paper trail. Right. And, you know, when, when you get somebody, especially you said Instagram, it's a lot easier to verify that it's harder for some people to, to verify even the email. If somebody is emailing you from a label. Yeah. Look at the, do this simple thing. Look at the email first. If they're replying to you from a Gmail, email, yep. <laughs> ain't nobody from Interscope hitting you up from a Gmail account. That's no part, of, part of the things you get when you're onboarding at a, at a label is that they want to give you your your own label email. So first thing you get, 
Yeah, it's first thing you get. Like you get that as part of any 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 corporate job. They're gonna make sure that you have some email that properly represents it. But uh, these are things that we overlook. Uh, also, the last thing I'll say about that: when check your thirsty meters, hundred percent thirsty meters. Because if they feel like you are come up, they oh, gonna try. Oh yeah. 100%. So if if you find yourself always like kind of begging for people to support you if you're always looking for people to to and this is not a disrespect to anybody but i think you just got to hear it this way mm -hmm. if you're always that person that's asking like i need it up they're looking for you they're oh, yeah. literally looking to do business with you and uh not the kind of business that benefits you mm -hmm. great answer great answer i hope we answered your question so again man like i said in the beginning curtis man i really appreciate you taking time after um joining me in this conversation oh can you hear me yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'll, you know, um, as a man, bro, I've been a fan for years. Um, I love what you're doing. Please continue to do so. Keep continuing to, to uh, push the narrative forward. And man, I'm gonna be tuning into the um, the beat battle today, man. So good luck with everything. And I'm here, my brother. I appreciate you. Absolutely. Thank you again for having me on. Mm, for sure. All right, y'all. Uh, anybody who wanna go in, y'all still got time to uh, hop in this beat battle. All right, all love, man. I appreciate it again. Y'all be we out. All right, peace. Peace.